everybody! Welcome to the Jada and Stitches Show. Fall is in the air and it's our favorite season around here, so we are going to jump right into a cute fall-inspired decor project. This little stuffed apple is made easily using scraps. It's a quick little build and of course you can use whatever color you want because apples come in lots of different colors. And if you've ever made our little stuffed pumpkins, they look really cute together too. Not only are these a cute little bit of fall decor, but they make a nice little back to school teacher gift too. And if you stuff them with light pillow stuffing, they'll be light enough to hang on the Christmas tree as well. So this little pattern spans a few seasons. We'd like to thank our family members for helping us pick today's tutorial. And if you're interested in becoming a member, you can click the join button down below for more information. There's also a link in our description box and you can check it out after you've made a few little apples with us. So let's grab our hooks, grab our yarn, we'll head on over to the craft table and we will stitch up some sweet little stuffed apples together. In order to make our little stuffed apples, I'm using 100% acrylic medium size 4 yarn. I have about 50 grams or 75 yards of my bright red apple color, and I need very small amounts of green for the leaf and even smaller amount for the stem, so negligible amounts of those. You're going to want some pillow stuffing, a pair of scissors, a yarn needle, you might want a safety pin or a stitch marker, and the hook I'm using today is a 4.5 millimeter also known as a 7 in the US and the UK. You can also use a 4.25 millimeter hook, slightly smaller, also known as a G or a 6 in the US, a size 7 in the UK. And if you haven't already subscribed, take a moment to click that button and the bell so you never miss another episode. And once you've got all that together, we can get started. We're going to begin by building our apple. So we're going to start with a cinch circle. And we're going to chain one to secure that circle. Into our little circle, we're going to work six single crochet. Once you have six single crochet worked into your circle, grab that little short tail and cinch it up nice and tight. We are working in the round, so we are not joining our rows. We are just working immediately into the very next stitch, which will be the first stitch of each of the previous rows. So that's row one's stitch. So first stitch of row one, we're going to work directly into it. So just stick your hook in there. It might be a bit tight, but that's okay. You can leave your little tail out and weave it in later, or you can work over top of it. That's what I'm going to do. And we're going to work two stitches, so two single crochet, into each stitch all the way around for row two. So we're going to go from a stitch count of six in row one to a stitch count of 12 at the end of row two. At the end of row two, you should have 12 stitches. And if you have trouble keeping track of the sort of start and stop of your rows, you can use your stitch marker. So you can put a stitch marker at the end of every row. So sort of mark the last stitch of every row. And from here on out, you can kind of uh, move it every row so that you always know where the end of your row is. That's if you have trouble keeping track. Um, if you are fine just counting, since it is sort of a small stitch count, then you don't need to use that stitch marker. So 12 stitches at the end of row two. We're going to increase again for row three. We're going to work two single crochet into the first stitch. And one single crochet into the next stitch. And that's the little pattern. We're going to repeat that six times in total all the way around. So we've done it once. We're going to work two single crochet into the next stitch single crochet into the stitch after that. That's the second set. You're going to repeat that four more times and we'll have a stitch count of 18. At the end of row three, we have 18 stitches. We're still increasing. For row four, we're going to begin with two single crochet into the first stitch and a single crochet into each of the next two stitches. So that's the little pattern for row four. You're going to do that six times in total. That's one set. Let's do it again. Two single crochet into the next stitch and a single crochet into each of the next two. So that's two sets. You want to do it four more times and you'll be up to a total of 24 stitches. That's 24 stitches at the end of row four. We're going to continue increasing in row five. We're going to work two single crochet into the next stitch. 
and then a single crochet into each of the next three stitches. You're going to repeat that little repeater pattern six times in total. So that's our first set done. And at the end of row five, you'll have 30 stitches. Two single crochet into the next stitch, single crochet into each of the next three. At the end of row five, we should be up to 30 stitches. That's it for increasing. We're just gonna work a single crochet into each stitch all the way around now for rows six through 12. So no more increasing, no decreasing. You're just gonna work around and around working a single crochet into each stitch. And you wanna do that for rows six through row 12. And I'll show you how to count it once we get to the end of row 12. At the end of row 12, you should have something that looks like this. And this is how you count your stitches. So first of all, our row one turns into row two right here at that little bump, and you can see it right where it turns into row two. So that's the guide I like to use to even up all my stitches. So even if your row 12 ended past here, you might want to just single crochet into all of those extra stitches until you are in alignment with that little bump, and that will give us a nice flat top and we can start our decreasing. You can count, this is row one, row two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and that's it. We are going to start decreasing now to create our little apple shape. We're going to begin row 13 with a single crochet, two stitches together, and it looks something like this. You enter your hook into the next stitch, pull up a loop like you were going to single crochet, but before you finish, you stick your hook through the second stitch, the one right next to it, pull up a loop in that, you'll have three loops on your hook, yarn over, pull back through everything, and that is single crochet two stitches together. That is a decrease. You're going to single crochet into each of the next three stitches as normal. And then you're going to repeat that little thing five more times. That's the first set. You're going to single crochet the next two stitches together, single crochet into the next three stitches normally, That's two sets done. You're going to repeat that four more times and we'll be down to 24 stitches. That's the end of row 13. We're down to 24 stitches and our top is starting to close in. We're going to continue decreasing. So row 14, we're going to single crochet the first two stitches together. But we're only going to single crochet into the next two stitches as normal. So this is the decrease. That's one set. Single crochet into the next two, or so I should say single crochet the next two stitches together. So we begin each set with a decrease and then single crochet into each of the next two stitches as normal. Repeat that four more times and you'll be down to 18 stitches. Our top's really starting to close in now. You should be down to 18 stitches at the end of row 14. You're gonna stop, pull up on your loop, and we're gonna stuff our apple. So grab your pillow stuffing. You don't want to overstuff your apple, and you want to use little bits of stuffing at a time. Now, if you're using this as a doorstop or a slightly heavier ornament, you can use chopped up t-shirt or socks or fabric scraps. You can also use leftover bits of yarn. You don't have to use pillow stuffing. Um, if you're using chopped up fabric, it's going to be a little heavier, so that's nice for a doorstop. But if it's just sort of a toy or something light to sit on a shelf, pillow stuffing or yarn scraps is fine. Once you have enough stuffing in your apple that it kind of sort of sits just underneath the surface edge of your last row, that's good for now. You'll have an opportunity to put in a little bit more just before we close up the top, but you still want it to be kind of on the squishy side because we want to shape it into an apple. Let's put our hooks back in. For row 15, we're going to continue to decrease. So you're going to try and sort of keep your stuffing out of the way as you work. You're going to single crochet the first two stitches of row 15 together. And then single crochet once into the stitch after that. You're going to repeat that little <laughs> pattern five more times and we'll be down to a total of 12 stitches all the way around.
At the end of row 15, you should be down to 12 stitches. You can continue to continue to stuff your stuffing down and keep it out of the way. We've got one more row of decreasing to go. We're going to single crochet two stitches together six times in total and that will bring our stitch count down to six. So single crochet two stitches together six times and we'll go from 12 stitches down to six. At the end of row 16, you should be down to six stitches. If you want to, you can add a little bit more stuffing into that hole just before we close it up. You are going to want, this is going to end up being the bottom of our apple, so you're gonna want your apple to be able to sit on its bottom so that it doesn't roll all over the place. So keep that in mind, but if it still feels really, really squishy, especially if you're using sort of pillow stuffing, then feel free to just stop for a second, take a little bit more stuffing, and just tuck it in that little hole before we close it up. All right, we're gonna put our hooks back in our loops. We're just going to slip stitch through the posts of this last row to just sort of close up the opening. Um, and it doesn't matter if your thing ends up looking a little messy or that if you have to sort of cinch it up with a bit of a long tail because this is going to end up being the bottom and you're not gonna see it, so don't worry too much. But this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna slip stitch around the posts so you can Put your hook through the next stitch like you were going to single crochet, but bring it back out through the stitch after that, and that pops the little post up on your post, or on your hook, and then you just slip stitch around it. And you can be nice and tight with your slip stitches, and then you move to the next post. You're going to do this six times because there should be six posts all the way around the last row of your apple. But if you can't quite see the sixth one or it's starting to look really, really tight by the fifth one, don't worry. All you're trying to do is just close up that opening so that none of your stuffing comes out. That's the end of row 17. You should have something that's almost completely cinched up. Yours might be completely cinched up, that's great. If you still feel like there's a little bit of a hole there, don't worry, we'll look after that in just a moment. You're going to stop now, cut yourself a nice long tail, so maybe 12 inches, 30 centimeters, something like that. Fasten off, and you can put your apple aside. We're going to move on now to the stem, and we're going to anchor that directly into the top of our apple. We're going to add our stem to the top of our apple, which is the place where row one is, so the nice smooth looking part of our apple. Take your brown or your stem color, make a slip knot, and we're going to join it directly to anywhere around that first row. So pick yourself out, you can sort of Stiff, stick it around the edge of row one or pick up the edge of a stitch. Doesn't matter as long as you're somewhere inside that row one area. We're going to join our yarn with a slip knot or a slip stitch, I should say. So let me just get that little tail out of the way. There we go. Doesn't have to look pretty. We're going to chain five. And you might find it helpful to sort of sit this on your work surface. So you should have five chains and the whole thing is anchored somewhere around the first row of your apple. We're going to skip over the first chain from the hook. So I know this is dark, but there's the first chain. You're gonna find the second chain and slip stitch into it. And you're gonna slip stitch into each of those chains all the way back down to the bottom where it's anchored to the apple. And then you're going to take your hook and in the same place that you anchored your yarn, wherever that is, slip your hook through it then and slip stitch to join. So you join with a slip stitch, you chained up five, you slip stitched into the second chain from the hook and all the way back down and then slip stitched back into the same place that you joined it in the first place. Snip your yarn. You don't need very much tail. Fasten off. And then you're going to take your hook, enter it through the side of your apple somewhere 
and come out right where you joined your yarn. So somewhere in that same place. Grab both of those tails and just pull the whole thing down into the body of your apple. And you can just sort of stuff them down or grab your yarn needle and wiggle it around there just to make sure that they're completely all the way into the body. Once your tails are woven in, you should have something that looks like that. So your little stem will stick right out of the top middle of your apple. It'll sit to one side or the other of row one. Now we can make our little leaf, so grab your green yarn and we'll get into that. With your green yarn, we're going to begin with a slip knot. And we're not joining this to our apple just yet. We're going to make the leaf first and then join it afterwards. We're going to chain five to begin, and this is just a little tiny leaf. So there's a chain five. We're going to skip over the first chain from the hook and slip stitch into the second chain from the hook. We're going to single crochet into each of the next two chains. And then we're going to work five half double crochet into the last chain. So half double crochet, wrap your yarn around your hook, pick up a loop, yarn over, pull back through everything. So five half double crochets into that last chain. Five half double crochet worked into that last chain looks something like this. We are now going to work up the underside of our foundation chain row. So there's a single crochet, a single crochet, and a slip stitch just to put it into perspective. So we're not using this. We're going to focus on the undersides of the other three stitches. You can work over top of your short tail or weave it in later. It's up to you. We're going to single crochet now into the next two undersides of those stitches or the next two chains. And then we're going to slip stitch into the edge of the last chain. So you should have something like this. You can weave in that short tail or trim it. Now we want to work down the center. So we're going to chain one. That brings us sort of out the top. You can pull up on that, give yourself a nice little leaf shape. And now you should have little spaces that run down the middle of your leaf. So there's a little one up here and then one under each of those stitches and of course the big one at the bottom. So you're going to stick your hook through that little space and chain or slip stitch and you're working sort of with the tail of your yarn out the back and this, the, the surface chains are running across the top of your leaf. So you stick your hook all the way through, pick up the yarn and slip stitch and that's going to create this nice little chained kind of vein running down the center of our leaf. So through the center, grab your yarn and slip stitch for a surface chain. Through the last hole, grab your yarn and slip stitch. You should have something that looks like that. Into the middle half double crochet or that third half double crochet, you can just slip stitch right through the bottom edge of it. And now you've got a little tiny leaf. You can leave yourself a long tail. That's what we're going to attach it to our apple with. It doesn't have to be as long as the tail left on your apple. Fasten off, give it a nice tight tug, and then you can sort of pinch your little leaf into shape. If you have a little bit of tail left over or you didn't work over top of it, weave it in or trim any excess if you did. Now we're going to attach our little leaf to the top of our apple so you can thread up that tail in your yarn needle. Grab your apple and somewhere near the same place where you joined your little stem, you're just going to pick up a couple of stitches right next door to your stem and just pull your little leaf through. And then you're just going to work right through your leaf. So you're going to work around and around and around through the same little stitch or the same little bit of, of stitch on your apple. You're going to work basically th through the same two little places between your apple and your leaf just a few times just to make sure that it's attached. And 
And once it feels like it's really on there, you can flip it upside down, make a small little knot on the back side of your leaf, just underneath it, and then pull the whole thing down into your apple. So you can just stick it right down into your apple, poke it out the bottom, and then just grab that tail with your yarn needle and wiggle it into the rest of your apple. And we're almost done. So we've got our stem on, we've got our little leaf on, and now we want to really turn this into the quintessential apple shape. So you're going to take your long tail left on your apple and if you've got a little bit of a space sort of left under here or you feel like it needs to be cinched up a little bit more just take a moment and weave that tail in and out along some of the stitches not necessarily all of them but just a few of them around the bottom edge of your apple and cinch it up nice and tight and then you can just work back and forth a couple times through the bottom last row of your apple that'll just secure it in place so now there's definitely no little little hole that any stuffing is going to come out now we're going to take our needle go right through the middle bottom of our apple and you're going to feed it right through the top middle of your first row so you might want to peel your leaf and your stem out of the way and you're going to push the top of your apple down so that your needle comes out roughly through the middle Carefully pull that string all the way through and then you can pull up so you get a little bit of an indentation on the bottom of your apple. You're going to make sure you're not going back down through the exact same hole. But you want to sort of hop over the edge of row one and then try to get it back out through the bottom middle of your apple. Close is fine too. And just pull, not too tightly but you want to get a bit of an apple shape going. And you can repeat this one or two more times to make sure that your apple isn't going to unwind. So if you're using a slippery yarn, it might not want to take on the first time. So you might want to do it a couple times just to make sure that you get that sort of, sort of apple shape definitely set in there. So do that a couple more times if you feel it's necessary and then we'll knot off and we'll be all done. Once you're content that you've got a nice little dip in the top of your apple and a nice little dip at the bottom, you can knot off your yarn just by making a small knot. Grab the edge of a stitch of your apple. Make a little tiny knot. And then you can just tuck that yarn back up into your apple and it will not go anywhere. So you can just wiggle your needle back and forth there until all of that tail disappears, disappears into your apple. All that's left to do now is just sort of gently squish and shape your apple into a more apple-y look. So you might wanna pinch the bottom a little bit, sort of pull up on your little leaf Maybe bend your, your <laughs> stem a little. And there you go. Now you've got a cute little stuffed apple, just perfect for a little bit of fall decor. And there you go. You can stitch up a bushel of these sweet little apples anytime you like, but what better time than the fall? <laughs> we hope you enjoyed making this along with us today. And if you'd like a written copy of this pattern, you'll find one for sale in our Etsy shop. And you can check that out. There's a link in our description box down below. We will see you here soon on the Jade and Stitches show. Until then, stay safe, stay crafty, and have a wonderful week, everybody. Bye. Hi, everybody. Mr. and Stitches here. Thank you for watching today. Here are some of our other videos you might be interested in. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe.